It's Sunday, March 12th here at the West End Gun Club. It's actually the first day of daylight savings for 2023, so we had to roll our clocks forward for those of you who recognize daylight savings in your region. I hate daylight savings time, to be honest. The concept of moving the clock forward so that we get like more daylight at the end of the day, I guess, doesn't make any sense to me. If you look, if you think about it, right, you're losing sunlight at the beginning of the day, and if people who want to keep daylight savings forever, that means we'll have eight o'clock sunrises like in December here, at least on, in you know the West Coast of the United States. It doesn't make any sense to me just to have sun. I guess on that part of the part of the year, the sun sundown or sunset would be around five thirty. So it, it it makes no sense. Five thirty to six. I just don't believe in it. I think we should just get, stick with standard time. It's better to have sunrise. You know, when it's supposed to be sitting right, you know, the sun's supposed to be rising. I don't like the idea of eight o'clock sunrises uh, during the winter time. Anyway, enough of my rants about daily savings. Out here with the Tika again. So sorry if people get bored with the Tika. It's just the, I was just trying to get some more data with it. Um, I released my review of it recently, both a written article and a video. During, in that video article, though, some, or the video uh, I posted, someone pointed out that, hey, it looks like your, your stock isn't, or the action isn't set in the stock correctly. And they were right. So I had to look at it, and apparently the way the sock sits, it, it didn't seat down correctly, so it was actually riding high in the gun. So that's why I wanted to come out here and test it again. Groups didn't change at all. But what happened this morning, I discovered, is that I was, I'm striking the magneto speed. So I was trying to shoot a group this morning, and I'm wondering, why am I not even hitting paper? I pulled the target in, and I'm still not hitting paper to like 15 yards. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? And come to find out that I wasn't really paying attention to the fact that this stock is slant. It's uh, it's canted, or it's it's it angles up towards the barrel. And I don't really use the magneto speed on this type of stock. And I the way I level the magneto speed according to most instructions is you can have this little spacer bar here to guide you, and that keeps it like you have it such that the spacer bar is just at the bottom of the bore. Well, that doesn't help when you're you're. Magneto speed is angled up because it is going to strike the front end. And I noticed that there's some kind of rub marks here on the rubber here. It didn't damage the magneto speed, fortunately, but you can tell that it struck. So what was probably happening early on this morning as I was shooting and it was hitting the bayonet and going up. Lessons learned. But um, that being said, I didn't experience that when the stock, when my barreled action was kind of misset in the stock because what saved me there is when I had the action kind of high in the stock and kind of not bottomed out correctly, it was actually running the barreled action a little bit more parallel to the bottom of the stock, kind of just a coincidence. So I was able to run the magneto speed without any issues. But interestingly enough, the, the groups don't mean anything, as, or sorry, the, the way that was sitting in the stock didn't really mean anything for the groups because they're about the same. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and finish a few more groups with other, other ammo just to validate that everything's the same. And then um, I'm going to head over to the pistol side because I want to shoot my 38. All right, here's a quick overview of the target. Top row center X, which is really nice. Not too bad here. That's probably half an inch. That one's getting close to an inch. This is CCS standard velocity. I shot this group here. I still had the main magneto speed on here, and I'm like thinking, this is not right. So I took it off, and these are the two groups that I shot after that without the magneto speed on. So I was hitting, I was still hitting, I was pretty, I'm pretty sure I'm hitting the bayonet with the Tika. Uh, so definitely had to leave it off. That's, not, that's pretty good, actually, for CCS standard velocity. Then I went to Elite Club, which is pretty good. We're right here. This is the first group, and then I just opened up here for some reason. It got really sloppy. Elite Match only shot two groups. That one's really good, except that flyer, and then this one's okay. Then I tried to shoot uh, SK Standard Plus, and this is, I was aiming here, and I was hitting here, here, here. So this is 20 rounds. It kind of wants to group here, but you can see it's just all up and down, which is terrible. That's probably a four inch group at 50 yards, which is terrible. So I went ahead and shot SK rifle match, which looked 
good from the beginning, but then it just opened up and it was all up and down. So that's about a two and a half inch group, vertical stringing. So right now I'm likely gonna stick with Ely Club and CCI Standard Velocity. I still have about a brick and a half of Ely Club left. I only have like a brick of CCI Standard Velocity left. This is actually pretty impressive for CCI Standard Velocity considering it's, it's relatively inexpensive. Pre-2020, you could have gotten bricks of this stuff for 20 bucks, of, of, you know, 20 bucks for CCI Standard Velocity, which is really nice. And if, if <laughs> I doubt we're gonna see those prices anytime soon. But right now I'm gonna stick with those two for this loaner rifle. If I need to dip into Center X, I will. Obviously for a loaner rifle for our matches, I'll have to offset their fees to cover that, their ammo utilization. But Center X will shoot good too. And I'd rather not use Elite Match if I don't have to, but that's Elite Match. So my choices will be based on price, will be CCS Center Velocity, Elite Club, and then either Center X or Elite Match. Before I leave the rimfire range and head over to the pistol side to shoot the 38, I wanted to show off this piece of kit, which I've had for over a month now. This is the Sharps Mountain Outdoor Gear Range Office. I saw this on the Instagram feed of, of uh, one of the competitors that shoots at our NRL 22 matches. His name is, uh, his IG feed is FrostyPRS, and I'll link to it in the video description. He showed this off on his Instagram. I thought this was pretty cool. So it's basically just a kind of a tripod organizer you know, to hold whatever gear on your tripod. There's a lot of various options out there. Some of them are significantly more expensive, but the one, the one thing I don't like about those options that I've seen is that they all attach to the legs. And so if you attach something to the legs, you're kind of stuck, it's stuck to it. You know, you can't move it to another tripod. And I want to be able to easily adapt, you know, move it from tripod to tripod because I have multiple tripods. Number two is it attaches to the legs. Unfortunately for something like the inverted legs on this TVC 22i, the, outer legs are on the bottom so you can't put the you know that that organizer on the on the legs here because then my my tripod won't be able to collapse so when i saw this and i looked into it i like the idea that it just attaches to the tripod using this strap and, and a clip right here this a buckle and it opens up basically it's just paracord and you have one of these uh cord I don't know what you call these things, but you know what I'm talking about. They just basically, it's a clip for the cords. So you can just slide the uh, cord up and down and tension it differently. So if you need to cinch it back up you just run that clip back and then it folds up. So the idea here is you basically have this nice panel here with Molly on the outside or pals webbing on the outside to support Molly compatible gear. And then on the inside it has loop, which you can attach a bunch of hook pouches or whatever. And if you want your patches. And this company is called Sharps Mountain Outdoor Gear, but apparently it's this, it's under the same umbrella as Blue Ridge Overland Gear. And Blue Ridge Overland Gear is a company that I've been buying a lot of stuff from for my Jeep because they make these uh, organizers for inside the Jeep. And so I have one, one for the roof, like the interior, the, the, the ceiling of the, the hardtop. I have some of their IFAC pouches that I keep behind my, my headrest. Their tool bag, their tool roll I have. And I think I have also their, their recovery bag. So I have a bunch of their gear and I like it. And incidentally, they just, this company is, they have like a spinoff called Sharps Mountain Outdoor Gear. Anyway, I thought it was pretty cool. And coincidentally enough, this pouch that I got with it, this is basically the same pouch that's inside my tool roll. I have like, there's three, four of these in the tool roll and they're, they're hook and loop. And so you can pull them out if you need to. Um, here's one for my Kestrel. And then I'm gonna adapt a few more things and I'm gonna probably put a clipboard and maybe put something for my shot timer my uh, Kestrel shot timer. But I think this is pretty pretty nifty. I'm gonna mess around a little bit more before I write a review on it. But right now I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty eager to, to mess around with this in matches. And thanks to Frosty PRS for posting this on his Instagram because something I saw that I liked. Finally loaded up some uh, ammo for the 38. I've only got 100 pieces of brass based on this uh, two 50 round boxes of Norma 38 that I acquired back when I got this gun. I probably should get some more ammo so I can get more brass. I got plenty of bullets, I just need more brass. Anyway, 4.3 grains of tight group. Seems like it shoots well enough for this specific gun. Uh, it's That's a pretty mild load according to the books. There's not much leeway in tight group. It's a very, very thin window in terms of the, in terms of the min and max. Granted, I can get into plus P range, which is beyond 4.3, so I should be fine in this gun. I just don't want anything that's hitting too hard in terms of recoil or whatnot. 
I wanted something a little mild for this gun because it's not fun to shoot this, to be honest. Uh, but it wasn't really meant to be a a range, you know, target practice gun. A short short barrel 38 with a very heavy trigger, like it's way, way over 12 pounds. Not exactly the uh, a, a relaxing gun to shoot. This is mainly for self-defense, right? Close range. I think that's five. Yep. One thing I don't like about this gun, at least right now, is that it's very hard to clean, amazingly. Like the cylinders get very dirty. And if you look at the soot on some of these cases, maybe I'm not loading it hot enough, so it's not getting enough sealant around the, you know, it's not sealing against the, the breech and the chamber well enough to keep the powder from coming out, blowback. <clears throat> I don't know. That being said, in order to clean the cylinders, I've literally had to take the cylinder off and put it into a, a glass beaker filled with C4, carbon fiber, uh, carbon fiber, Bortec carbon cleaner. A C4 is actually really good at carbon cleaning, but once I soaked it in there and then I got some Q-tips to clean it out, it, it was clean. So definitely very dirty. Man, my trigger finger already hurts just shooting after 25 rounds or 30 rounds. It like hits the pad right here. It's very hard hitting on this. Uh, the way the the way the finger is on the trigger and the the angle I'm trying to take on it, it just it's not very good. So that's why I say it's not a very fun gun to shoot. I mean, this is kind of your you know obviously this is like a self defense type thing, last resort gun. Um, I like this gun simply for the size if I'm just gonna walk like down to the mailbox to get my mail In the evenings or whatever. I like to just have this in my pocket. It's very easy to carry Gives me enough rounds for you know, just in case right? Anyway um, Just put a few rounds in there Not sure if anyone has one of these, you know Short barrel 38s. What do you think in terms of this on this platform? I think it'd be fun. I like revolvers insofar as I don't have to pick up brass. You know, it's just all kept for you. I'm not, I'm not crawling around the ground trying to pick up brass. That's why I like appreciate. I appreciate revolvers, and I may actually get a target revolver. Um, that Smith and Wesson, they have a 40, 40 Smith and Wesson, with uh, and also shoots 10 millimeter. That looks interesting. I kind of like that because I have a lot of 40 brass, and I have some 40 projectiles, and that seems like a nice gun get like a six inch barrel i think it's available in just be a nice target shooting gun you know something that can you know cock back and shoot like single action sort of light trigger pulls be kind of cool to have because these double action triggers are really heavy anyway let's go ahead and pack up the gear and we'll get out of here all done shooting this morning pretty casual sunday just shooting the tika a little bit like i said earlier to just to uh, revalidate the groups after fix the stock and apparently discovered a magneto speed issue Shot my 38, and then I brought out this Sharps Mountain Outdoor Gear Range Office just to play with and get some initial photos of. And then we'll have more on this in the very near future. Hopefully we can have a match soon. Again, our NRL 22 match for March is supposed to be April 26th. Registrations are actually open. I didn't send out the email yet. The range is still technically closed for non-member use. This is a Sunday, and it's there's like only one other person here I hear on the other side of the range. But there's no range, you know, no range staff here, so I'm not entirely sure what's going on. The road, the river, the creek is not that bad. Like you can get through it; it's not terrible. 
So I'm not entirely sure why they're not fixing it uh, and they're not opening up the range right now. But I hope that we'll have our match on March 26th. Anyway, I'm going to finish up a few uh, chores here and then I'm going to get out of here. But thanks for watching. This is Sunday, March 12th here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again in the next vlog.